Hello and welcome back to Underlab. One question that I see a lot of people wondering is just who exactly is the most powerful character in Undertale? Is it Asgore with his trident? Sans with his mysterious powers? Or perhaps is it someone completely different? Well, how about we find out? Now this video isn't going to be your typical countdown. I've already made one of those and my top pick was naturally Sans. What this video is about is trying to work out who the most powerful character is within the lore and story of the game, rather than just how hard they are to beat in terms of gameplay. For example, we're told that Asriel is a literal god. However, many players say he's one of the easiest bosses because you can't truly die while fighting him. Therefore, I'm going to rate each character based on what we can actually infer from Undertale's narrative, rather than just how much of a bad time I personally had while fighting them. Alright then, let's take a look. The first major character we meet is Flowey. Now I have a few interesting points to make about Flowey in particular. It's tempting to believe that without the souls empowering him, he's extremely weak. However, I can't think of any character with the ability to cast a spell that completely surrounds you with bullets. If it wasn't for Toriel, the human's adventure would surely have ended there and then. It's hard to say how exactly magic works, but it's hard to deny that Flowey is extremely cunning, and perhaps far more powerful than is immediately obvious. Without in some way using trickery to get the upper hand, however, I believe Flowey would be at a huge disadvantage. That is, of course, unless he has six human souls and can upgrade into the slightly more formidable Omega Flowey. Though in terms of lore not quite as powerful as Azriel with his equivalent of seven souls, Omega Flowey is still a force to be reckoned with and easily one of the most powerful characters in Undertale. That's a good start, but let's keep going. Poor Napster Bluke. By comparison to our previous entry, there doesn't seem to be much going for him. While his tears are harmful for whatever reason, it seems all he wants to do is spend most of his time lying about, pretending to be trash, and feeling sorry for himself. While a much loved character, I somehow doubt that Napsterbluke has any chance of becoming the most powerful monster in the underground. Moving on, we come across Toriel. Toriel certainly isn't a character that comes to mind when I think of extremely powerful. However, it's worth not underestimating her. The other dreamers are of considerable power, and Toriel is only weak because she believes in pacifism, and secondly, she has no intention of killing you. She effortlessly blows away both Flowey and Asgore in two cutscenes within the game, suggesting that she's much stronger when attacking someone she actually intends on hurting. Unfortunately, Toriel's own kindness is also her weakness. She'd rather die than let you leave the ruins, as she wants so dearly for you to be kept safe. Also, because of how kind she is, she appears to have no training with any sort of weapon, unlike other monsters, leaving her only with her magic. Therefore, while Toriel is far from weak in comparison to your average monster, it would seem that she would likely lose in a direct confrontation with something who can equal her strength, because she's reluctant to fight. After getting past Toriel, we meet Papyrus and Sans. I'm not going to talk about Sans for the moment, as there's a lot more going on with him than there is with Papyrus. Papyrus is an aspiring royal guard who even by Undyne's own admission apparently isn't that poor of a fighter. Once again, his problem is that he's too kind. If he beats us one too many times, he'll let us pass out of pity. That's not the sort of attitude that will keep you safe when confronted with an enemy that wants you dead. Perhaps Papyrus would have a better chance of being the strongest character in Undertale if we ever got to see what that special attack was. Unfortunately for him, we don't. Moving into Waterfall, we encounter Undyne. But before I talk about her, I may as well mention the Mad Dummy. The Mad Dummy is a ghost possessing a former training dummy. They're not the hardest boss in the game by far. However, interestingly, they note that they're completely impervious to physical attacks. If their attacks didn't lend themselves to being thrown back in their face, the Mad Dummy would be the biggest threat to the human by far. However, any monster would be able to defeat them as monsters can use magic. Therefore, it's hard to say how powerful the Mad Dummy really is in relative terms, though considering that they're dumb enough to keep using the same attacks that end up harming them, they likely don't have the brains to defeat all of their competition. Anyhow, back to Undyne. Undyne is a fierce competitor for the strongest character in Undertale. She's absolutely relentless when pursuing the human through Waterfall, hurling more attacks at us than anyone else within the game. When we do finally come to face her one-on-one, -on -one, she strikes incredibly fast with her spear. It's also worth noting that she's apparently capable of beating Asgore, having trained with him so much. While these are all notable achievements already, she's even stronger than first meets the eye. 
On the genocide run, she'll find within her the determination to fight past death, as she knows how desperately she must stop you. No other monster in Undertale gives such an obvious display of determination, as it's something monsters aren't supposed to be able to withstand. Therefore, in terms of willpower, Undyne is the only character capable of standing up against the human. Moving into Hotland, we encounter Alphys. We never actually fight Alphys in direct combat, as she either tries to help us or runs away on the genocide path. There's no doubt in my mind that she's likely one of the weakest characters physically. She's never trained to fight before, nor does she possess any skill with any martial weapon, and she doesn't appear to have any tricks up her sleeves. However, it'd be a humongous mistake to think that Alphys couldn't pose a significant threat. She seems to be the single brightest living mind in the kingdom, having managed to build a body for Metaton, and managing to evacuate the entirety of Hotland on the genocide run. If Alphys had no choice but to fight someone, she'd likely bring all manner of advanced technology along with her. And, if against another monster, though cruel, she could always just give them a shot of determination and watch them melt before her eyes. There's very little reason to think that Muffet would be particularly powerful in the grand scheme of things, though there's no denying that she's quite formidable in terms of gameplay. One thing worth considering is that she appears to have an entire army, or at least an entire bakery's worth of spiders behind her back. Also, let's not forget her fearsome pet. With so much influence, Muffet could likely take over the underground, if she wasn't so preoccupied with baking confectionaries. If anything, Metaton is a shining example of Alfie's genius. His body is indestructible unless the switch on his back is flipped and as we find out during the quiz show, he appears to have the ability to home in on his target with electricity. Without the need to aim his attacks and the apparent invincibility, Metaton would surely be a candidate for the strongest character in Undertale. Metaton's apparent inability to stop himself from dancing when his switch is flipped, however, seems to be quite a blatant weakness. Also worth considering is that his EX form is inefficient with its use of power. In theory, a smartphone could simply flip his switch and leave him to dance until he's out of battery. Metaton, therefore, would likely win any fight against Brawn, though against Brain, he'd be out in the cold. If we went on the genocide path, in the Judgment Hall we will fight Sans and discover him to be an incredibly powerful enemy. It's extremely hard to rate Sans' power, as he's completely mysterious, and the full extent of his strength is unknown. Sans is not only smart, but powerful and agile too. He tries to win the battle by never letting his round end, showing off his brains, and he dodges every attack until the last blow, proving how nimble he is. Not only that, but he appears to have mastered the use of advanced technology called Gaster Blasters. He seems to understand time travel, and he is apparently able to teleport. Therefore, Sans is surely the most powerful monster, right? Well, maybe not. He does have a weakness or two. He is genuinely very lazy, and for that reason likely never reaches his full potential. He also deals most of his damage through something called Karmic Retribution. Karma in real life is the belief that good actions will result in good things happening to you, and vice versa. Retribution is the idea of a punishment that you deserve being inflicted upon you. Therefore, Sans is surely only so powerful against someone who deserves it. If a good person has comic retribution used upon them, if anything, it should heal them. Therefore, Sans is crippled in the respects that he's only so powerful against evildoers, meaning that in a friendly duel or spa, he likely wouldn't be much stronger than anyone else. We're not done yet, though. Asgore is a character who in terms of lore must be surely quite powerful. He led his people through the War of Humans and somehow survived. He also killed at least six humans in order to acquire their souls. While we have no idea how powerful those humans were in particular, we know that human souls are by default more powerful than monsters. He also seems skilled with that giant trident of his. Compared to some of the entries we've had so far, however, he doesn't seem to be capable of anything too special. Finally, there's Azriel. Azriel turns into the god of hyperdeath upon absorbing six human souls and thousands of monster souls. In this form, he's surely as powerful as it gets. Were it not for the human, he could have taken complete control over the timeline, in order to manipulate and torment everyone to his heart's content. It's also written on the plaques in Waterfall that a monster that's absorbed a human soul is a truly terrifying thing. The only reason the fight isn't impossibly difficult is because Frisk is filled with determination for the final encounter. Therefore, as follows, in terms of Undertale's lore, I'd rate Undyne the Undying as the third most powerful, Sans as the second most, and Asriel as first. But wait a second. We're forgetting someone, aren't we? Many players argue that it isn't really Frisk you're playing as on the genocide run, rather just a projection of your own malicious intent. When a human is filled with a desire to kill and to harvest love and EXP, there doesn't appear to be anything that can stand in their way, with most monsters dying in only a single blow. With the power to reset whenever defeated, making them literally invincible in every way, the most powerful character in Undertale by far is the human. Or maybe it's no one I've mentioned yet. Maybe it's Gaster, or the annoying dog. Without some indication of how strong they are, however, it's hard to say. I'll stick with the human because we can actually tell how powerful they are. Reminds me not to get on the wrong side of shaggy-haired children with poker faces.
Who would have thought that a small child could become so powerful? Perhaps you disagree. I thought the human was an obvious choice and perhaps a bit of a cop out, which is why I listed my top 3 of Undyne, Sans and Azrael. Naturally it's very hard to work out where Sans fits in, as I don't believe we've shown the full extent of his power. Feel free to comment who you think is the most powerful character in Undertale's lore, and tell me why you think so. Anyhow I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time!